Hello, my name is Eric Rock. I'm a photo tour leader for Jovan Os Photo Safaris, and I'm here to talk to you about what's in my camera bag. This is hopefully the first installment of a series of these where we take a look at what's in some of our guides' camera bags as they go out on their expeditions or in their travels and taking photographs. Today I'm in my backyard, I'm in the mountains of Montana, which means bear country. And if you take a look, uh, anytime traveling in bear country, I carry bear spray with me. It's probably the most effective method for dealing with bears in the back country or anytime you're in the outdoors. So if you're going to be photographing in bear country, purchase bear spray, learn how to use bear spray, and take it with you all the time. It's no good for you if you leave it back in the vehicle or back in the cabin. Always take it with you while you're in the field. That's enough about that for now. Let's go ahead and start taking a look and talking about some of the gear I'm carrying today. Since I'm scouting around my area of the woods, I'm traveling as light as possible today. But I also, I don't have any particular target species or um, area that I'm particularly interested in photographing, so anything's a possibility today. So I'm traveling light. Uh, take a tripod almost everywhere I go. Strong, sturdy tripod, good sturdy head, um, and also a quick release mount. Makes it a lot handier to use. I believe um, if you're gonna use a tripod, have a good tripod at the same time, uh, convenient one. One that works for you, you're more likely to use it when you need to. Now, let's take a look inside my bag. First off, the first thing you'll see is, right off the outside, water. I carry water with me everywhere I go. Um, sometimes I'm out for extended periods of time. Last thing I want to do is get dehydrated. So always carry extra water with you. If you're going for extended periods, you may not want to carry that much water, save some weight. You might take a water filter with you and that way refill your water bottle through the course of the day. Makes a good bit of sense if you're going to be out all day long. I'm not out all day today, so one liter of water should be sufficient for me. Another thing I want to be prepared for anytime I'm in mountainous country is a change in the weather. Right now things look pretty good, but temperatures could change, shower could come in, a big cloud could let, let loose a shower. I'm prepared. Oftentimes what I'll do is if I have a little extra room, I'll pack it around my camera in my camera bag itself so it's nice and secure. Now oftentimes I keep things I'm most likely to pull out on the in a moment's notice out in the outer pockets. Today I'm carrying a mind shift and this is a first light 30 liter. So it's a rather small camera bag. Uh, it's fairly lightweight. Um, it's got plenty of room for the gear I'm carrying today. In these outer pockets, I'm gonna carry things like a small filter case. Now I don't use filters that much in the field, but I still carry them. Uh, primarily I'll have all oh, some circular polarizers in here maybe a couple of neutral density filters, maybe eight stop, 10 stop neutral density filters in case I wanna uh, take some long exposures on a brighter day. It's gonna be right here close by where I can grab it in a moment's notice. And I always keep things in the same place. That way I don't spend a whole lot of time looking for things when it's time to dig it out of my pack. Now, this pack also has an upper pocket as well. A Couple other things I'll keep close by, insect repellent. Um, I tend to travel with these little insect wipes. This is the gnat repel. It doesn't have the deed in it. Um, could, could be a lifesaver. Keep you from going crazy. You're out there, you find the perfect shot. Next thing you know, the mosquitoes move in or the black flies move in. This might be your lifesaver out there. Keep you there shooting a little bit longer. These are nice. I'll often keep them in another little plastic bag so if they do break open, they don't leak out and get into any of my camera gear. Another item I take with me everywhere I go, sunblock. And I put sunblock inside its own little ziplock that way, if it were to leak, it doesn't get all over top of my camera gear. And it's always there. I'll re reapply it maybe once every 40 minutes to an hour, depending on the day. And even on a day like this, when there's no direct sunlight, there could still be a lot of UV light bouncing around out here. So next, we're going to go inside the contents of the pack, and I'll tell you a little bit about more what I'm carrying here and why. Now, there's no right or wrong pack for any given situation. Some work better than others. I'm carrying a backpack today because I am scouting. I'm traveling over some pretty uneven terrain. I'm exploring around, trying to find different things to photograph. A backpack makes the best sense. If I was bouncing around in maybe uh, a Land Rover in Africa, backpack may not be the most efficient way to carry my gear. May not be the most dust protective. Might not protect it from some of the bumps you get on the trail. So, but for today it's a backpack. And let's go in a little bit further. And likewise with backpacks, there's no right or wrong gear. 
um, whatever you have is the best gear to have. So let's take a look at the main contents. And today, since I am traveling as light as possible, I'm carrying Micro Four Thirds gear. Micro Four Thirds, in this case, Olympus mirrorless, um, or Panasonic mirrorless, if you will. Uh, it's a nice professional level gear, well suited for outdoor photography. All their equipment is weather sealed, so it works out real well. Panasonic has very similar equipment. I just happen to be carrying and working with Olympus right now. Uh, I do uh, find it quite convenient and much lighter weight. Now, if you're not sure about what format is best for you, again, there's no one right or wrong format. Today, uh, the four thirds, the mirrorless works for me because I'm trying to save weight, but still carry a full complement of lenses. For instance, my, uh, my body today is an is the OMD EM1 Mark II. It's the top of the line, um, high functioning camera model. Now with micro four thirds or four thirds format, you're getting about one half the sensor that you would with a full frame 35 millimeter DSLR. So that, every lens I have then, even though it's designated into millimeters of that particular lens, is gonna be multiplied by two. For instance, the, the large lens I'm carrying on this is a 300 millimeter, which in would give me the same perspective as a 600 f4 in an SLR gear or a full frame gear. So this is relatively easy to manage and travel around with. So if I'm trying to photograph small birds, or in the case of some small pikas here and among the boulder field, uh, this is the lens I'll go to. Plus it has very, very reliable image stabilization that works with the body that allows me to shoot in less than prime light at any given time. So. The micro four thirds or four thirds in this case Olympus OMD system and I'll start off just by showing you the lens I had on because I was photographing some of these pikas here in this boulder field so um, this is the equivalent of a 600 millimeter f4 lens very easy to handhold but also I have my tripod here if I need to get on that to, to squeak out a little bit more depth of field in the situation so that's my go-to camera and lens that's mounted on the body right now let's move on down the line Another one of my workhorse lenses is this one right here. Another Olympus Pro lens. This is a 40 to 150. And again, to do the math on that for you, that's equivalent of an 80 to 300. And this is a 2.8 lens, okay? Uh, if you've ever carried a 300 to 8, you know how much work that is and how heavy it is. This thing is relatively light. I keep it on its own strap like this. Uh, this is my workhorse lens. Oftentimes when I'm hiking, this is over my shoulder with one of my bodies attached, ready to go in a moment's notice. This is one of those lenses you'll have ready that say, for instance, a deer jumps out and across the trail, you're ready for it. Or because of its close focusing capabilities, I can aim close and get near macro shots with flowers or insects as they buzz by. So a great little workhorse lens for me traveling the field. I can't go out without this lens. I really to tell you the truth. I just don't go anywhere without it. And it's a, it packs up real small. And when I'm not wearing it, stays nice and nestled right down there in the pack. Now, I always carry two bodies with me, one of which I'm, I'm actually videotaping this segment for you with. So let's go ahead through the lenses some more. Uh, for those large lenses, I carry a converter. You know, whether you're carrying full frame gear or four thirds or APS-C, whatever format you're carrying, if there's a match teleconverter, this, these are great for extending your camera range or your lens range while working in the field. Many of them are relatively small. They pack easily away in a small little pocket. Many times I'll just carry, if I'm wearing a jacket, this will be in my pocket so it's close by if I need that little extra reach, whether I put it on the 40 to 150 or the 300 F4. So it's always close by someplace or another. Now, my next lens that I would share with you is actually one of the ones I'm filming with right now. The lens I'm filming with is a 12 to 40, which is equivalent of a 24 to 80 2.8. Um, that's essentially one of those workhorse lenses for somebody walking around. This is the type of lens I would use if I was maybe walking around a village uh, photographing people or village life. That would be a typical lens I would have on my camera with plenty of versatility, whether it's for you know getting a wide shot of the community or reaching in to maybe pull out a nice portrait of somebody standing in the doorway. So that lens is on my camera right now doing the filming. I'd move down the line and show you my next lens, which is a great landscape lens. So if I decided I was gonna, you know, watch the changing light here and let's say it's gonna get good for, for landscapes, I'd pull out my wide angle zoom. This, this particular wide angle zoom is a seven to 14, which is equivalent of 
a 14 to 28 millimeter 2.8. Very nice landscape lens. It allows you to get in close to a subject, some foreground detail, and allow the landscape to kind of wrap around it. So this is one, now it's a little bit heavier, but if you look at the size, it's still a practical size, and it is a very nice quality zoom. Uh, this would be my go-to lens for you know getting in close and working those intimate landscapes, but also allowing the larger landscape to unfold around it. Very, very important lens when I switch to landscape mode, which I often do, especially with beautiful textures like these rocks and the old trees and the flowers around me today. This would be a, this would be a great lens. And if you notice, a lot of times I keep my lenses inside low pro cases like this just for the little extra padding they give especially traveling bouncing around from place to place but also if i need to if i need to leave some stuff back at camp back at the hotel i can quickly grab these out attach them to my belt and i'm good to go so i'm a little bit more versatile that way especially if i'm just heading out for maybe a meal i'm with a group and we're heading off down into a village for dinner or something i'll grab maybe one of my one of my camera bodies and a lens or two that i might want to take along with me so I'm ready to photograph. Now my next lens I want to share with you is one that I think every nature photographer should keep in their quiver. This is a macro lens. Now if you're a Nikon shooter or if you're a Canon shooter you might look at something maybe like a 100 millimeter macro. This is a 60 millimeter macro for the Olympus system and that basically converts or it translates to 120 millimeter f2.8 macro. This thing is tiny. I mean, I could carry this in my jacket pocket all day and almost forget it's there. And it's very, very sharp. It's a nice little lens to carry along with me. If I'm waiting for something to happen, maybe I'm waiting for the pikas here to get active again. Maybe they've been a little bit quiet during the day. I might start looking around. All of a sudden, flowers become my new landscape. Or I might find some interesting insects, a dragonfly resting in the morning. This would be my go-to lens. Whether you're shooting in a beautiful place like the mountains here in Montana or your backyard, a macro lens will open up a whole new world to you. And if you've already shoot macro, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you, there's always something to photograph if you have a macro lens attached to your camera. There's no such thing as a, as a bad day when you've got a macro lens, even in the rain. Oh, I love watching water drops come to life when you move in close. So I think that covers the main body of my camera bag. Let's take a look at these external packs or pockets here. Top row, camera batteries. I always take a couple of camera ba battery, spare batteries, not just the ones in the camera, but spare batteries with me every time I go out for whatever camera bodies I have. And if I'm going out for a couple of days time, I'll make sure that all those batteries are charged ahead of time. The last thing you wanna do is hike out somewhere like this, get out here and realize you don't have enough juice to take any pictures. Next pocket down, this nice little mesh, mesh, mesh pocket allows me to see what I have in there. Extra cards, cable releases, little doodads, things like that, markers. And also the bottom one has a few cleaning um, cloths as well as I carry a little, a little air bulb to blow off the more coarse debris before cleaning the lens. I tend not to do too much cleaning when I'm in the field because a lot of times you just end up introducing more dust or moving it around. So, but I do carry gear with me in case I get a quiet moment. Uh, maybe later on the day at a restaurant or while I'm taking a break, things have calmed down. It's a good time to maybe dust off your gear, clean it off a little bit. So I think that finishes up pretty much what's all in my bag today. Now, if things go well, uh, maybe I'll take you on another adventure, share with you some of the equipment I might be carrying in. Again, this is the stuff I would carry on a long day of hiking around, exploring around. If I was working out of a vehicle, I'd be carrying different gear, different lenses. I wouldn't be so much concerned about weight, but I found that this Olympus system for me is a great way to carve down weight, but keep all the lenses and the equivalent focal lengths that I require for a day of shooting. Now that said, um, everybody's gonna be different in what they're going out for and what they prefer to shoot with. Everything has a trade-off. I just happen to like the trade-off of the weight for this particular trip and this chance to get out exploring. So on behalf of myself, and Joe Van Oss Photo Safaris. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, stay tuned. Hopefully we'll have another episode for you and you'll learn what's in our bag. So all packed up about 26 pounds, not counting the water bottle. Pretty good for that much gear. Thank you.